Hey guys, I apologize for the wobbly hand. I'm not used to vlogging like this. I decided to do the intro outside today since I didn't want to set up my tripod and everything inside the room. So it's going to be a brief one. I just realized today that it's been quite a while since I've done one of the Let's Color Grade videos. So I thought it was time for episode 10, episode 10. About a month ago, we went to Singapore and we went into the Cloud Dome. You might have seen that all over Instagram and socials. And it was a pretty cool spot. We got a few places where we could shoot just uh, us for a few seconds. And I got a pretty cool shot that I wanted to grade today with you guys. Normally in my workflow, I use my LUTs these days, but I wanted to grade everything by hand today so you can kind of follow along and see the whole process. So aside from using my LUTs in different places, this is pretty much my up-to-date workflow with how I grade and how I control everything. So it's not necessarily as beginner friendly, but I do have tutorials on beginner note trees and these things. So if you want to do that, then you can check those out as well. They will be easy to find on my channel. And other than that, let's just jump into the computer and get started with DaVinci. Alrighty, we are inside DaVinci Resolve and I've jumped straight into the color grading section, put up a note tree ready for us. This is how my note tree looked these days and labeled everything so you can hopefully easily follow along as well. I know this is not the most beginner friendly, but I'm going to try and go both fast so it's not a long video for once and also uh, explain everything that I do so you can hopefully follow along. If I speak a little bit too fast, to go a little bit too fast, a recommendation is to set the speed down of playback here on YouTube, that can help. So with that said, the first things that you might notice is that we have a color space transform here and a color space transform here. I made a video quite a while ago about the Vinci White Gamut and why that makes sense. It's basically shifting everything from log here. So my footage was shot with the Canon R6 and in Canon Cinema Gamut, Canon Log Free, and now I translate it into DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. This is a very large color space. It just makes sure that I can work as diversely with the colors as I want, and there's no limitations to how the footage was captured and how I'm working with it inside of DaVinci right now. Uh, you don't have to do this. Uh, the other one here at the end is just transforming it from DaVinci White Gamut and into Rec. 9 and Gamut 2.4. So you could just have this set to Canon Cinema Gamut and Canon Log Free, have it at the end, not have the first one, and that would be perfectly fine as well. This is the workflow that I usually do because I grade a lot of different clips from different cameras. So this makes sense to have everything in the same color space. And that means that everything in here is graded in DaVinci White Gamut. So that's why I do it. But as I said, you don't have to do that. You can just use the color space transform at the end or the lot that you got from your manufacturer or wherever else to translate it into Rec. 79. That's perfectly fine as well. So with that out of the way, that is the first step that we do. That just turns it from this lock into Rec. 709. So you can see we've got a little bit more color and contrast back into the image from this very flat and desaturated profile. So that's perfect beginning to this. Then I always start with the contrast. This is our color correction, the conversion for, to Rec. 709 and the contrast and exposure. So for the contrast, we'll head into the custom curves here, this button here, and we'll just make a point in the shadows and drag those down. I'm looking at my waveform over here at the same time, and then I'll take my highlights and drag them up, but I won't drag them up quite as high as I drag the shadows down, something like this. And you can see just from that quick adjustment, we got a lot of saturation back and the image already looks a lot better. I might push it a little bit further and might even push the shadows a little bit further as well. And then I want to soften them up just a little bit. So I'm dragging my black point over here on the left up a little bit as well. I think this looks pretty good. You can still see that the highlights are clipped a little bit and that's because we had the sun here. It was coming in, we were shooting, there was people walking on the bridge, they walked behind the corner and it was go time. So I didn't really have time to expose correctly. I exposed for the skin tones and prayed that I had something left in highlights and I think this clip turned out pretty well. I have other clips from this uh, dome here where we had no time to adjust, where I just overexposed a lot of it. It still works, but just to say, I know some people will say, oh, it's overexposed in the highlights. I know, I really don't care. I think it still looks great. Let's still turn the exposure down a little bit and see if we can save a little bit more of the highlights. You can see we could actually drag it down quite a bit. We still don't have any detail out here, but now I feel it's too dark. So I'm just gonna reset my highlights here 
Uh, I want to drag up the gamma just a little bit and then the lift down one. So giving the gamma around 0 0.02 and the lift uh, negative 0 0.01, just to kind of balance it out a little bit. We didn't do that much because we did a lot with the contrast already. And I think it looks pretty good right off the bat. I did expose it decently, apart from the highlights that exploded. So I think this is pretty good. This is just for our uh, color correction. So we went from this lock and into this image. This image is perfectly fine to use as well. I like to go a little bit further and create a stylized look, but now is where everything becomes pretty subjective. So this is pretty much what it looked like in real life. Uh, I think everything looks pretty good, contrasty, in focus, sharp. So I'm happy with how it is now. Now is where we begin to do our uh, subjective color grading, if you will. So I'm going to add a little bit of teal and orange to this one. That's just my preferred look. So I do that by adding some teal. You can almost not see anything move because I do it by adjusting this number by hand. I'm not using the wheel as I used to back in the day because it's simply not that reliable. And I often go too much. You can see we already added quite a lot of teal. To add some teal, you add uh, two or 0.02 uh, blue and 0.01 green or just a little bit less green than blue. That will give you that teal color. And I'm actually gonna drag out a little bit more. So uh, removing red will just drag it further towards the uh, blue point as well. So you can see now we got it a lot of blue because we did it in, or a lot of teal because we did it in the lift. This is also a pretty cool look, but I want to bring it back a little bit. So in the gamma, I'm gonna do negative 0.01 in the greens and negative 0.02 in the blues. And that will just remove it from kind of where the gamma uh, starts, which is around here, and then it makes a break here so it takes everything from here it leaves the black and the white alone but it kind of adjusts everything in the middle around from this area so not exactly in the middle but around here uh, and we'll soften it out in each end i hope that makes sense but that's essentially what the gamma does whereas the lift adjusts the black point and the gain the white point so now i think this looks pretty okay we could see if we added 0 0.1 in the red that's okay, but I actually think we lose a little bit uh, too much of the teal then. So I would rather have a little bit more of a cool image for now, and we will adjust that a little bit later as well. For moving forward, let's go to the curves. That's the next one that we have here. So we started with the primaries. Always like to set in the look first, in this case, teal and orange. One thing that we actually could do here that I just remember is maybe add a little bit more warmth to the gain. So by putting around 0.05, 1.05 and 1.03 you get this warmer look maybe that was a bit too much so i'm just adjusting this accordingly i think this is a little bit better now we got a little bit more warmth up here it's still quite subtle but we just kind of pulled all the colors together a little bit so inside the curves here we have our hue versus hue our hue versus sat and hue versus loom I'm not gonna do the most adjustments, but I'm just gonna lock in her skin tones first. That's what I always do, because then we are sure that no matter what we do, we're not gonna do too much with these uh, without it being the actual intention. I like how her skin tones look already, so I don't think I'm gonna do much to those, apart from maybe boosting the saturation a little bit and the luminance a little bit as well, just to make it stand out. It's almost unnoticeable. Then for the greens, I kind of want them to be a little bit more desaturated. So I'm gonna see where they lie. I'm gonna drag this point a little bit away from the teal because I don't wanna affect the teal that much. And the point here, I'm just gonna delete because now I can just drag these down and create this kind of look with the faded greens. And I don't want the teals to be adjusted too much. So I'm gonna drag it over here and not too far down. Let's see what that, that did. Don't feel like it do as much as I would like it to, but I think, yeah, now it takes away some of that green and makes it a little bit more desaturated. I like this for this look because I think the green took about away a little bit too much from what we had before. I am just gonna push them a little bit more towards the warmer tones, like so, by dragging this up and making a point here in the teal. For the teal colors, uh, let's see if we want to do something. So I'm just going to mark the area here and just see what we do if we drag this up and down. We basically don't touch anything. 
what if we do something like this? We can actually boost the teal a little bit. So maybe we're going to do that. Something like this. It's pretty unnoticeable what we did. It's not much. I think maybe the yellow tones here could just drag these out and then boost them a little bit towards the orange here. Something like this. You might not be able to see at all what I'm doing here. Now I'm just adjusting the colors to bring back a little bit more saturation here and into the yellows as well because I accidentally desaturated everything a little bit too much. It doesn't have the hu a huge effect here, but I do like what we ended up with. So it's subtle, but now we have a subtle teal and orange with these two. You can see we get a little bit more teal in the shadows, in the dark areas up here as well and some orange here or at least some warmer colors so i like this look i like how it's ending up it doesn't always have to be a big change now we're just kind of dragging the colors together a little bit and it might have been so subtle that we almost can't see it then for the sat loom it's just to add a little bit more contrast into the uh, footage here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag on her skin tones like this and that's going to give me a point here so if i drag down the first point here that's going to darken everything that's before that point so you can see everything here being darkened we don't want to do it too much especially not with the point closest to the left here and then i'm going to drag this up a little bit and what this does is just create a little bit more se uh, separation between what we selected in this case her as you can see we get a little bit more contrast stands out a little bit more we're darkening some of the shadowed areas a little bit more as well and this is just a look that I like to do, a little simple trick to make her stand out a bit as well. And I also think we lose a little bit of that orange or teal, sorry, teal feel on her, which is pretty good in my opinion for this. So with these three notes, what we did was we went for this to this. It's pretty subtle. We got a little bit more warm up here, some teal overall and balanced out a little bit. We got a bit more contrast on her, which is absolutely perfect. So that was our color correction first. Rex 9, contrast, exposure. Now our simple color grade, primaries, curves, and saturation luminance here for some contrast. And now we're gonna do the last part, which is the masking. So for the masking here, I'm gonna make a focus mask first, which is a power window, circular power window here. I'm gonna drag it over her, something like this, I think, and then drag it out. This is always my, I don't know if you can call it a signature grading style because I think a lot of people use masks but this is always where you get that wow effect when people see it so this is probably the thing that I'll go a little bit slower with if you haven't seen this before so we're dragging out a mask on her and we want to make even more contrast I know we have contrast here we have contrast here and now we have contrast here I like to split it up and separate the things here that I do because I just feel gives me more control over what I'm doing and how I do it Obviously, our focus subject of this shot is her, so we want the focus to be on her. But now when I add some contrast by dragging down the shadows a little bit, dragging out the highlights, she gets a bit too dark and that takes away a little bit from it. So what we can do is we can go into the gamma, just drag this up a tiny bit around two and drag down the lift as well. And that will just give us the contrast pretty much but without taking away from the luminance. She still gets a bit darker, but that's because we're adding contrast, we're dragging down the shadows still. So I think this is pretty good. This looks very well as I intended, but now we're gonna have a problem because you can see we are not even at the start of the clip. And you can see if we go back even further, she's actually gonna move away from the frame. If we go further in, she's gonna be there and our mask is here, which is gonna be a problem. So what we can do to fix this is, let's go to the first frame, first of all. And we're gonna drag this up just a little bit. Make this a bit bigger, something like this. Still looks good. Then we're gonna to head to this, which is the tracking window. Now you can use the auto tracking. I usually don't do that. It's been a long time since I've done it because I had some issues with it and it didn't track properly and I ended up wasting more time trying to get it to work than actually just doing the simple thing that I wanted it to. In some cases, it works pretty well for most of what I do, I haven't been very successful. But what I do is I go into the tracking window. Instead of being on clip, I'm going to frame. 
And then this little diamond icon will give you a keyframe. So if you look here, we don't have any keyframes now. If I click this, we'll have a keyframe. Because we have added a power window, this is what it's going to control. So right now we've told at frame one, you're going to put the power window here. If we go a little bit further into the clip, we can now adjust the power window and make sure that the feathering is following as well. Going in a little bit further, this still looks pretty good. So let's see where it looks good. That's around here. Put in a keyframe there. Now she's starting to move a little bit again. So we're going to make it smaller just so it follows her along the frame. And I'm not going to do it for every single frame because doing it like this will make it move along with where she's going as well. And now you can see my camera work is not the best. So she's moving away a little bit. And this should pretty much just show us that the keyframe it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but it follows it pretty well. It smoothens it out itself by because we made the keyframes and it's just going to fill in the rest in between those keyframes. And I think this is pretty good. You can see that even when we stop it here, we still get the contrast on her and it looks pretty good. So that's what I wanted to do with this. Now we have our contrast on our subject. Now let's just go back to the frame we had before. You can see it just perfectly follows her. Love it. Now what I've done is I've added an outside node. An outside node you add by adding a node and an outside node. What this does is that if we stay in this and click Shift H, you can see that we have selected her and feather it out so we're selecting a little bit around her just to blend it a bit more. If I click on the outside node here, it'll take everything but what we selected here. And because we feathered it, you can see that we're actually still selecting her a little bit. That's okay. It doesn't really matter that much. You could adjust your mask <clears throat> on the first one and that will still be fine. So what I want to do with this is actually just go into my color uh, primary wheels here, color wheels. And I want to drag down my gamma a little bit. because so I want to create not exactly a vignette, but I want to draw in the attention of her and still blend it together. So dragging this down by 0.4 and maybe even giving a little bit of desaturation here. We'll just pull in the focus a bit more on her, which I really think stands out well. And if I deselect the focus mask, this will also be deselected because then it basically doesn't select anything on the outside node. So you can see we go from this to this, which is, in my opinion, a pretty nice look. Really like how that looks. Just turn it off and on again. Pretty satisfied with this. So this is the masking trick that I do for creating focus and contrast, putting in some more contrast on her and then lowering the exposure or the gamma in this case on the outside node and even a little bit of saturation. You don't see that that much, but it's still there. Okay, next up is the highlights. So what I'm gonna do in this case is because we have the sun here, I'm gonna pull a mask up I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and then the softening I'm going to set to 100. This will make sure that our mask is now at around the sun, the brightest point, and it feathers everything out. Now I wanted to feather out all the way to the edge here. So I'm actually going to drag out the mask a little bit again here just to see if we can get that to work. Something like this. That's pretty good. Now, because we already have this being a little bit overexposed or clipped, I don't want to uh, clip it even more by brightening this part, which is basically what we're gonna do in the highlight mask. So what I can do is I can go into my qualifier. I don't need the hue and saturation. I just want to work with the luminance. I have Shift H clicked or activated right now, so I can only see what the mask is selecting. Now by dragging down the top point here, I can slowly see when it stops being selected. So you can see now everything here is gray. That means that the brightest points are not selected anymore. Now, this looks a little bit too harsh and you'll be able to see that if we adjust anything. So I'm gonna take the highlight softening or the high softening and put it to 10. And that'll just soften out the edges a little bit of this. And then I'm gonna see if we're gonna do it a bit more or less. I think around something like this is pretty good. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the shadows because I don't necessarily want my highlights to affect all the darkest points. So I'm going to do a 15 softening on this and you can see it just softens out the darkest points as well. And now we have a selection that is feathered out. It doesn't select the brightest points 
and it doesn't select the darkest points either. And with this, I can go into my custom curves here and I can just pull it up ever so slightly. Maybe pull down the white point a little bit as well. And you can see we're just creating more of a bright effect on everything else. It still does select <clears throat> the brightest points here. So we could go in and adjust that a little bit more. And now it doesn't affect it as strongly. I still want to add a little bit more orange. So in the gamma here, I'm going to add 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. I'm actually just maybe going to add the orange here. So we get that real orange glow. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe it's a little bit too strong. 0 0.05. That's better. I like that. A little bit more yellow. This looks pretty good already, but what I have added in recent time, just to give it a little bit more, you probably haven't noticed that if you've seen my reels because it's so subtle, but I like to go into effects and search for halation. And for the halation, I'm not gonna do much, but what halation does, and you can see that immediately, it kind of blooms around the highlights here. It makes it bloom here and gives it this halation effect. Now, this is too strong. So what I usually do is I just click somewhere around here with the strength and spread it out a little bit more as well. And that just gives us a very subtle effect. You can see I'll turn it off now and I turn it on. And I kind of like how that looks. I know it's often known for being in film, but I like to add it here. It just gives a little bit more of a bloom and a little bit more of a cool effect. And what I've done here for this note, by the way, is that I've created a serial note, right click, added a serial note, and I've just combined the blue output with the blue input here, which is the mask, which means that everything that's selected in this node will also be the things that are selected here. So we're only applying the halation to the brightest areas that we just selected with the previous node. So that's why you don't see the effect affect everything, but just the highlights that we just selected. Now, you might have already guessed what we're doing for the shadows. So we're going to do a mask here. And this one, I'm just gonna drag in from the bottom. It's not gonna be the most important mask in this, but I'm just gonna drag it up from the bottom here, something around this. You can see what I'm selecting here. Shift H. I'm not going to do any selections here. Sometimes I also select the brightest and the darkest points, but in this case, this mask is not going to be the most important. What it's going to do is just take a bit more focus up here on her main frame rather than on the bottom. So I'm just going to soften it out a little bit, drag it down, something like this. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm very satisfied with that. So let's take all of the masks, turn them off turn them on again. This is what we created. I am pretty satisfied with how this looks. Let's just play it through. I think this is a really nice clip and I really like how this ended up. The desaturated greens, the strong orange up here, the muted tones on the bottom and the halation effect just all comes together very nicely. And I think overall this shot is one of my favorites that I've shot in a very long time. It was such a interesting shot because we only had a brief second to shoot it without any people and the sun coming in like this and trying to get the settings right these are really the situations where knowing your settings and knowing your camera uh, comes in handy and it did i managed to do a pretty good job i feel like and i'm really excited about this great so with all that said i hope this tutorial helped you out i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please leave a comment down below let me know what you think let me know if there's anything else you would like me to cover. I know a lot of people have asked about uh, GoPro footage. I don't have that much GoPro footage to, uh, to grade, but I'll try and get my hands on some more and do some more tutorials on that as well, because I know it's something that a lot of people want. But other than that, um, thanks for watching and until the next time, take care.